All right, in this video, I'm gonna explain what, what you're seeing with these boxes right here. The green box is an occluder. Usually you put some sort of geometry that's, for example, a wall that's gonna hide portions of the scene that you're trying to render. In this case, I haven't put the geometry because first this is a contrived example and I wanna show what the effect is of this technique for CPU-based occlusion. Now, the red box, is some sort of geometry that's occluded by the occluder, which is the the green rectangle that you're seeing here. So it's red right now, indicating that it's occluded. What that means is it's not being drawn. Even though it's in the scene, I've written the code so it realizes that it shouldn't draw itself. So that'll give you significant speed ups. For example, if this was some complicated mesh that's being animated, well, you save all that processing time by not animating or rendering that mesh since it's occluded. And of course it updates dynamically. So if I move around the world, eventually we'll be able to see what's behind the occluder. So if I move up here, up the stairs, maybe it'll show up. Oh, okay, no, it hasn't shown up because again, you can see that the box is still occluded. But if I move forward, it should pop up there. So there you can see it pop up and it's sort of a crappily textured AK-47. And the box now turns white because it's being rendered and it is not occluded by the green occluder. Again, if I move down, eventually, there, it goes red again. And as you can see, it's because it's been occluded by the uh, occluder. So I'm doing this dynamically on the CPU, so I'm not using any OpenGL extensions or feature hardware features to determine this. I'm doing this entirely on the CPU. So on mobile devices that don't have hardware occlusion support, I'll still be able to have that feature since I've put it in, put it on the CPU. So again, from this side, whoa. So yeah, I can get really close and still not have it. Now, if I go through, it should render, yeah. So now I'm behind the occluder, so obviously it'll render the mesh. The other thing is if I go over here and turn around, since I'm behind the occluder now, uh, it's not the I don't render the green rectangle because it's not being concerted for occlusion. So this optimization in, is based on you know the artist's ability to place the occluders. So in this case, he's only done it on the other side of the AK-47. So therefore, now it's being drawn. If I wanted occlusion on this side, he'd have to place another occluder. So it's based the artist decides what occluders to do to use and which objects should be tested for occlusion because that's another thing some of these objects they may be really simple and it's just faster to render them than to actually do the occlusion test so i give the artist that flexibility so let's see if i can do this again one final test yeah right there he's he's on the very edge of the occluder so the gun's visible and there now he goes it goes back behind the occluder. As you can see, it's it's invisible. So that's just the advantage of this uh, technique. And for now, I've gone as far as I can with sort of doing these tech demos with the artwork that I have. If I continue down this path of not using, you know, professional based artwork, it's getting kind of risky because I may write some code that artists that doesn't it's not uh, compatible with their workflow so I've sort of hit the the plateau of what I can do without involving artists so I won't be doing videos for a little while until I get some artwork done by some artists so I can continue with the game so for the time being this will be the last video and I'm also going to be doing some research but uh Hopefully the next video will have much better artwork than the crappy programmer art that I've been coming up with. And till next time, this is um, the last tech video that I'll do for a while. Thanks and bye.